Apollo 7 was launched on October 11, 1968 at 3.02 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 34 at Cape Canaveral. It was the first crewed launch of the Apollo Command and Service Module lofted into orbit by a Saturn 1B rocket. Apollo 7's crew consisted of Commander Raleigh Shira on his third space flight, Command Module Pilot Don Isley on his only space flight, and Lunar Module Pilot Walt Cunningham also on his only space flight. In this case, there was no Lunar Module, but the title for the third crew member was kept constant regardless. Apollo 7's goal was to test a new and improved Apollo spacecraft after the tragedy during Apollo 1 ground testing where the three crew members, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chafee, had been killed in a fire triggered by design flaws. Fixing those flaws had taken a year and a half, and now NASA needed a flawless mission to stay on track for a lunar landing by the end of the decade. With this mission, Wally Shira became the only astronaut to fly on Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. He already planned to retire from NASA after the mission and was laser focused on fulfilling the mission requirements to test all the systems and last a full 11 day duration. He wanted to conclude his time at NASA by basically saving the Apollo program and to that end used every bit of the sway he had to ensure that everyone was prepared. The spacecraft was in proper shape for launch and everything would go off without a hitch. He specifically requested pad leader Gunter Vent, even though Vent worked for McDonald, the manufacturer of Mercury and Gemini, rather than North American, the manufacturer of Apollo, because Shira trusted Vent. As a result, Vent would stay pad leader for the rest of the Apollo program. But despite everything, Shira still couldn't defy launch fever on October 11th. The wind was blowing in the wrong direction, violating the mission rules. Shira had previously insisted on this wind rule because, in the case of an abort, the wind would push the spacecraft towards land and it wasn't designed to sit down on land. However, Mission Control decided to continue with the launch regardless of the rule and Shira relented. This, however, put him in a bad mood. Nevertheless, the initial phase of the mission went well. After launch, they did a mock approach of the S-4B stage, pretending to dock with a target representing the lunar module. Unlike in the video, for this mission, the pedals on the adapter stayed with the stage. It was only after this mission that they were made to separate from it. Apollo 7 then got some distance away from the S-4B and then re-rendezvoused with it to test that capability, which was hard because they didn't have a rendezvous radar on this mission, unlike later missions. Nevertheless, the crew managed it. During the rendezvous though, Shira opposed Mission Control's request to turn on the TV camera because that had not been in the plan and they were quite busy. Three days into the mission, they finally made the first live TV broadcast from an American spacecraft, and at this point they were still feeling relatively good, so they got NASA a much needed PR boost. In fact, they got an Emmy for this and their subsequent live transmissions. Apollo 7 is often remembered for friction between the crew and Mission Control though. Shira had been very insistent about things from the start, but Mission Control was used to his manner. By day 8 though, Isley got a bit testy with Mission Control after they sent up an update that caused a computer freeze. Shira's approach might have rubbed off on him, but he hadn't earned that leeway. Isley later joined in when Shira complained about a test that was causing too much RCS firing. At the end of the mission, the crew had colds and wanted to leave their helmets off during re-entry to ensure that they could deal with the cold and the pressure differential. Mission Control did not agree to this, but Shira put his foot down and insisted on his right as commander of the mission to have the final say for the safety of the crew. In retrospect, people involved generally agree with Shira's approach on this and his approach to the mission as a whole, especially considering it was a complete success. However, even though the crew conducted a perfect mission, they had been too impolitic about it and rubbed managers and administration the wrong way. Shira left NASA as planned, but neither Isley nor Cunningham went to space again. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Apollo 7.